recently there was a couple of articles in the local paper I thought was interesting and had some photos of uh, effectively this. What's this? It's a face shield. It's a pretty cheap one, a plastic one, um, and it has some issues. One, the headband is really, really uncomfortable to wear for any length of time. It's really hard plastic. Uh, and the uh, material tends to get scuffed up, and then pretty soon it's hard to see through. Uh, and uh, the thing that caught my interest, because I've had this for a while, as you can see, it's getting pretty, not quite opaque, but getting there, it's hard to see through this thing. Um, so, the thing that caught my interest was um, the local newspaper here yesterday had an article about... Um, face masks, uh, Orange County, here in Orange County, that the uh, Rotary Clubs were giving these uh, face masks away. And you can see it has a pretty big headband in here. Uh, I don't know. Um, which is a nice thing to do. Um, giving these things away to uh, businesses that are attempting to open here in California. Uh, we won't go into some of those issues. Um, so I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I wonder how much it costs for them to put those things together and then give them away. Um, this was yesterday's paper. And then in today's paper, um, there was another thing about kind of the same thing, but for uh, babies, you know, face shields. And uh, those are obviously a tiny bit smaller, and I doubt that they have a really hard plastic headband on it. <clears throat> so I thought, hey, I've been doing something here for quite a while because I, I don't know, some of you may know by seeing one of my other videos that I have been attempting to uh, paint my garage door and to do that I had to get all the old stuff off. Um, so I've been using wire wheels and scrapers and stuff like that and you definitely need eye protection and in particular uh, face protection. So quite some time ago I figured out how to uh, make some really ch cheap face protectors uh, that were one lighter than this one and a heck of a lot easier on your head than this headband All right, so I'll show you how I did mine you could do one it's really really easy very cheap uh, so cheap that you could actually throw the things away if you wanted to so here's one of them I made uh, and I'll show you how to do it uh, and I try to make it look a little bit better, so I actually put a band on the front. Right? Um, the, the really important part is, one, the material that I'm going to show you how to use, and two, that you've got a nice, soft, squishy part that lays against your forehead, this part right here. The front part here is just to make it look a little neater. So that's, that's the most important thing, is that, one, you've got the right piece of plastic, uh, and two, that you got something soft for a headband. It doesn't have to be this, but I had all this material already here, so that's why I use this. So let me show you how to start. The most important thing in making, I should say the most important part in making this is, what's this? Well, some of you may remember in the bad old days before we had uh, color printers and laser uh, inkjet printers and stuff like that. When you wanted to do a presentation, you used uh, overheads. <laughs> uh, and I still have lots of these things. These were designed to go through, uh, or still are designed to go through um, a, a laser printer because they get hot, you know, to put that ink on there. Um, I haven't tried these particular ones with an inkjet. Usually the ink won't dry on these very well. So, anyway. Uh, this is basically just a, a sheet of stuff we use for overhead, and I can tell you it is tough stuff. Um, and that's the key to this. It's very, very light, easy to use. So if you want to make it look uh, semi-professional when you're done, like mine, uh, first thing I did, and do, because you can throw these away, they're so cheap, is I cut the corners off down here to kind of round this off like that and then cut this corner off 
You might be really, really neat. You could use a like a lay a jar on here or something and trace around it to get your little arc. Beautiful, but it's all you really need just so you don't have a sharp corner down here. All right, the next thing you need besides that, very important, is uh, some way to hold it on your head and uh, adjustable at that. I suppose you could use a piece of string or something, but you'd have to tie it behind your head each time. But all I did was uh, use some of this Mylar uh, tape that's designed to hold um, like computer cables together. It's kind of like a, a tie wrap or a zip tie or whatever term you're used to, except uh, it's adjustable. So this is, it's um, Velcro. You just need a piece long enough to go around your head, right? So in this case, you know, you just pull enough off to, to get it around your head. Now I'm just going to take a shorter piece here to show you. So now I've got this, right, which can wrap around your head and then stick together like that. That's all you really need. All right, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to attach this to that. Now you say, well, how do you do that? That. So I'm going to attach this to that just by stapling it. Now remember, remember that um, that you're going to be pulling this around your head, right, like that. So you have to be sure that you have enough and you want it kind of centered so that you have the same amount over here or over here in order to meet it at the back of your head. Now, if you want, you know, the, the crossover point to be out here, you know, then you kind of put this wherever you want. But typically, usually you use both hands to wrap this around your head so you want the meeting point to be uh, in the back, center in the back. So I'll put another staple over here. And that will secure this so you can pull it around your head. All right. But you do need something on the back that will um, not, the, the, uh, this is the back, that will not uh, irritate your forehead. Besides that, you want to look a little bit uh, more professional. So I happen to have this stuff. Uh, probably you don't, but uh, it's pretty cool. It's garage door uh, insulation, and it's really sticky on this side, but uh, very smooth on this side. So once again, I'm not going to try to make this particular one very neat. So I'll take a piece. Cut it off with my zippy dippy scissors. And then I can just lay this down on here. Like that. And now I've got a piece that goes up against my forehead. And it's nice and smooth. Like that. And that's all you really need. And it makes a really nice face shield. It's very light. And with the Velcro, you can easily attach it around the back of your head. Nothing to it. Now, if you want to make it a, a little more professional looking, you could take another piece of this stuff right here and put it on the front, which is what I did with mine. All right, so I got cut it on the front and the back and I noticed after using these uh, a number of times that I really do have to staple the uh, stuff on the front in addition to um, or in, in, uh, in cook. I can't get the word that's how it goes um, so I just staple it one time with the stuff on the front instead of stapling first the strap and then the foam 
it does stick, but it wants to lift a little bit. The inside is no problem because it's going to be pulled against your forehead. Really easy to do. The only thing is you have to have some of these acetate sheets. Um, I don't know if any other kind of plastic would work, but I can tell you these things are tough. The, they just don't give up really easily. So you can cut them, you can staple them, all kinds of stuff. It works really well. And take my word for it, if you're, uh, you know, depainting something, you got paint chips flying all over the place. And particularly if you're using something like a wire wheel or a wire brush, you really want to have some face protection, not just eye protection. Um, that's always a given if you're working with tools, but face protection, because this stuff, that, that paint coming off of there, it splatters everywhere. You end up looking like you've got um, a terrible case of measles, depending on what color the paint is that's coming off. So there you go. Really quick, really easy, and if you have the stuff, it doesn't cost anything. I've got lots of this stuff left over from the dark old ages. I've used, used lots of them. Um, in my presentations back in the days before we had color PowerPoint presentations and stuff like that. Great stuff, really tough, works fine, very light, and uh, easy and cheap and quick to do. And that's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs>